Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Get ready. I'm ready. Are you ready? Are you ready? Get ready for the SAT. It is the recommendation of Prince George's County Public Schools that most students take the SAT during the spring of their junior year. No student should take the SAT without prior preparation, and it should be known that it takes approximately four hours. During this program, you will become familiar with how to approach the different types of questions on the SAT, how to work within time constraints, and how to look for clues to reason through complex questions. Hi, welcome to SAT Prep for Math. This is Amanda Metzl from Parkdale High School. I'm an SAT math teacher there. Today I figured that we would go a little bit into the geometry that is covered on the SAT. I'm not going to go into a lot, I'm just going to go into the angles and one particular shape. So first I want to show you some shapes and important features that you need to know about the test. On the test they're going to give you many types of angles to figure out. This is important to know, that when you have this angle and this angle, x plus y equals 180. So if they give you the value of x, you can easily calculate y. Another important piece of information that they'll give you, or that you should know, is if you have two parallel lines, let's call them L and M, and it's notated, or the, the geometric notation is this, and you have a line going through it, there are lots of angles that are congruent. Angle 1, angle 2, angle 3, and angle 4. This will come in handy when you're trying to figure out across the way, because they might give you something like, if angle 1 is this, what's angle 4? So, and then the last piece of information is, given any triangle, the sum of the angles will be 180. These three pieces of information should help you calculate any type of angle problem that they give you. So, let me give you a first example. In the figure shown, what is the value of x? One of my first little hints for you or test taking strategy is whenever they ask you to find a particular piece of information, I want you to circle in your question. This will save time because then you can just zero in on that circle and make sure that you answered the correct question at the very end. So, let's reread the problem. In the figure shown, what is the value of x? So I'm going to circle x so I know what I'm finding. And then I'm going to go in here and look at my picture that they give you. First, note that unless it's noted, no SAT problem is written to scale or drawn to scale. So I see that this angle is 2x and this angle is 3x plus 20. Well, unless I knew that first key piece of information I told you, I couldn't realize that this is actually a straight angle, so if I sum all those together, or add them all together, they'll be equal. The next test taking strategy I have is, feel free to cover pieces of information up in a picture, just to simplify it so you don't get so confused. Normally you won't have a scrap piece of paper, so you can't use what I just used. You'd have to use your hand or move the book around. So let's go back to the problem and figure it out. 2x plus, so I'll have 2x plus 3x, plus 20 is equal to 180. And I'm going to solve. First I must combine my like terms. 2x plus 3x is 5x plus 20 equals 180. Remember, all calculations can be done without a calculator on the SAT, but it is there as a resource. If you know that you're not too good with adding and subtracting, then you might want to turn to it. So let's turn to the calculator to quickly figure this out. The first calculation I have to do is 180 minus 20 to solve. That gives me the 160. So I'm left with 5x equals 160. The next thing I'm going to do is have to divide. So 160, and if you don't know that off the top of your head, you're just going to do it in the calculator. 160 divided by 5 leaves me with 32. So I have x equals 32. Now, sometimes they might give you more than one variable, so that's when you're going to go up to your circle and double check that you solve for the right thing. I solved for x, I'm looking for x, so my answer is C, 32. And I would go to my answer sheet and bubble it in. So just to review, I've given you two pieces of information that you should use, or two test-taking strategies. The first is to circle what you're, they're asking you to find, and second, cover certain parts of your picture up, 
either with your hand or your answer booklet or something to simplify the picture so you can easily find what you're looking for. Okay, let's turn to the next problem. It's almost just like the last problem that we had in terms of you have multiple lines and they're intersecting at one point. Now, quickly looking at it, I know A, 3A, 2A, and this is an X. Now, in the figure shown, lines L, M, and N intersect at one point. What is the value of X? So I'm going to circle X. That tells me what I'm looking for. So if I look at this, the first thing that should pop out is 2A equals X. But I don't know the value of A, so I'm going to start covering pieces up and see if I can come up with something. If I cover up here, I can see that I have an angle that's going to total 180. So I'm going to write an equation. 3A plus 2A plus A is going to equal 180. And again, I'm just going to solve my problem. 3A plus 2A plus A is 6A equals 180. If you don't know how to do this, you're going to turn to your calculator to see if you can come up with a solution. I see they're multiplying, so I'm going to divide both sides by 6, and I'm going to calculate 180 divided by 6 with my calculator. 180 divided by 6 gives me 30. So I'd go back to my problem and I'd write 30. And I quickly double check, am I finding A? No, I'm not. I'm finding x. So I already wrote my equation for that. 2a equals x. So I'm going to do 2 times 30 equals x. I know off the top of my head that's 60. If you don't, you will turn to your calculator. I come over here, I look at my answer choices. I see my answer is d. I would go to my answer sheet and bubble in d. So again, the geometry is not like you see on the, when you took geometry class. It's a little bit more simplified. You don't need to do constructions like they have you do. You don't have to do proofs. You just need to know certain key facts and be able to use them to determine an answer. So let's look at one other. This one's going to involve that second piece of information I told you about parallel lines and the angles that are congruent. It's a little different because you can't necessarily cover up like we did last time and find a nice pretty little equation. So let's look here. In the figure, what is the value of AB? I'm going to circle AB. I look at my picture. I know L, M, and N are parallel. So I'm going to say, okay, let's cover up a piece and see if I can see something. If L and M are parallel, then I know angle here and angle there are both congruent. So I know A is equal to 30. I can do the same thing with M and N. B and angle 70 are congruent, so I'm going to say B is equal to 70. Now I have two answers here, but I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Don't be fooled and quickly find A and bubble it in or grid it in. We're going to take and look back at our circle, so let's go back to the problem. And I see, again, I just zero into my little circle and I see A plus B. So I just do 30 plus 70 and I know that it's 100. Remember one quick thing. When we have grid ends, we have to make sure that we grid them in properly. If you come up with a negative answer, you cannot have that answer. There are no negative problems or negative answers on these problems. Secondly, if you have a mixed number, like one and a half, you cannot put in one space, one dash two. You must put it in as an improper fraction, so it would be three over two. And lastly, if you come up with a number that is longer than four spaces, it will not fit in your grid. So you did something wrong, and you have to go back and look at your problem. So let me grid this in for you. I know my answer is 100, so I'm going to write it up top, and I'm going to make sure I only fill in one circle per column. Remember, this part where I wrote it does not matter. The part that the computer scans when they're grading your test is what's bubbled in. If you do not bubble it in, you will not get credit for that question. Also remember that unlike the multiple choice, if you get the answer wrong, they will not mark any points off. So on these types of questions, it's actually better to try and guess. If nothing else, bubble in your favorite number, you might get lucky. Now, we'll have one more question for today, 
and it is a triangle problem. We're going to use two of the facts that we learned today. The first fact being straight lines. If you have one, it totals to 180, the two angles or multiple angles. And the second fact is the interior angles of a triangle sum to be 180. So let's take a look at the problem. In the figure shown, x equals, well, that's just another way of stating find x. Now, this angle is angle x. This angle is 25. I've got angle numbered 2 and 1. This angle is 75, and this angle is 35. I know it's a little hard to read, so I'm going to rewrite them for you. Okay, now, the best way is to use that first strategy I told you and start covering things up. If I'm looking for x, you probably should start there, and it might give you a hint. Me personally, I personally just start filling in information until I get what I want. But I always start at the top. So I'm going to look at this first angle. Well, I know that they've given me one angle. So if I can figure out the measure of angle that's numbered or lettered 2, or signified by the 2, I can figure out x. So it doesn't help me very much. So I'm going to cover up the next part of the problem. It doesn't help much. It's giving me not a triangle. I don't know anything about it. So then I'm going to cover up this. And if you look, I've got a triangle. If you ignore this part right here. So I have 35, 75, an angle that's numbered 1. I can quickly figure that out. 180 minus your first angle, 35, and then subtract your second angle, 75. Now, be careful when you're doing this, you don't want to make a simple mistake. So I'm going to turn to my calculator and just double check my subtraction. So I have 180 minus 35 minus 75. And I find that the answer is 70. This is not my value that I'm looking for. It says angle 1 is equal to 70 degrees. Now I'm going to start looking at my whole picture again. Well. I know this angle, so if I cover up the rest of it, what do you see? You see that straight angle that I told you that sum up to be 180. So again, I'm just going to quickly do 180 minus 70, and it's going to give me my angle measurement for angle 2, which is 110. Now I'm going to go back to that very first triangle that I showed you, and I have enough information that I can figure out what it is. And I'm going to cover up my information that I don't need back on the problem. And I see that if I take 180, subtract my first angle of 25, and then subtract the angle measured 2, I should have my angle. And I'm quickly going to do that in my calculator just because it'll save time. So I turn to my calculator. I do 180 minus 25 minus 110, and I see that it's 45. This is what angle x is really equal to. So I'm going to go to my answer choices, see that d is the answer, and I'll bubble in d on my answer sheet. So I hope you have learned some useful pieces of information today. To review, I'm going to go back to that original picture that I drew you. So let's take a look at it. These are the three, piece, three key pieces of information x plus y if you're given a straight line and angle measurements is equal to 180. Remember, this can be more than one angle like I just showed you in the first problem. Second, angle 1, angle 2, angle 3, and angle 4 when you have two parallel lines are congruent. Now, I did not mention this earlier, but the unmarked angles are also congruent, so you can do it the other way as well. And lastly, angles A, B, and C inside a triangle sum to be 180. This is true for any type of triangle. So I hope you learned something today. Please remember that this is not the only thing that's on the SAT. Feel free to ask your SAT teachers in your building and possibly your SAT coordinator for, assist for assistance if you need some. Also your SAT guidance counselor will know how to help you out maybe or send you in the right direction. And, of course, you can check out a book in one of the libraries to help you out. I hope this helps you with the SAT. I hope this helps you with the SAT preparation that you're in the midst of. And please have a good day.